So I thought it was about time to start looking at Open Plotter 3. It's clear that the team behind this have done a considerable amount of work and I'd just like to put my thanks forward, not only in the application, but also in terms of documentation. They really are putting a lot of effort into this. So if you've been following on the forums, so if you go to forum.openmarine.net, you'll see that there's been a thread at the top there monitoring the progress. And they've now got to a position really where most people, I would say, could, could upgrade. And, and this is being recorded sort of early Jan. So this is obviously being developed all of the time and they're making good progress through the applications that are part of, of uh, OpenPlotter 2. But what they've now done is they've now got to a point where that a lot of those applications are ready to go. So there's a little bit still sort of in progress, but most of the applications applications have reached a stable state and there's obviously going to be times where they update this and, and continue that that progress so do keep updating uh, your version and also it's always a good place to start on the open marine uh, website to look at what progress is being made in terms of apps and, and new features some of the main things that have appeared in three are we are now at a stage where we can run a 64-bit operating system. So they've migrated to the later version of the Raspberry Pi OS, which is Bullseye, and it comes in two flavors, 32 and 64. So just a quick bit of information around a 64-bit operating system. In terms of memory, there's a lot more options now. So where we've in the past really only had sort of up to a gig, two gig on those sort of Raspberry Pis, we've now got a Raspberry Pi that's got eight gig of memory on it so you can actually make a lot more use of that memory on the Raspberry Pi with a 64-bit operating system so I'm going to split the video into two so there's going to be a section of getting started what you need to do in terms of open plot of three and then there's going to be a, a chunk of the video that just focuses on upgrading from two because that process actually is really quite simple and you can do it quite quickly so I'll put timestamps at the bottom of the video so that you can jump through to the section that you need So if you head straight to Google and you put an open plotter, that's going to take you straight to the documentation, the downloading page. That's that's one of them. And the other site that you're going to need really is probably the forum. So forum.openmarine.net. And there's some really good articles and posts and things on there. Um, it's got a good community. So let's get started and, and get it downloaded. So if we head over to here, um, welcome to open plotters documentation. Click on that one. Um, and as I say, what they're really trying to do is put the documentation around each of the apps, which is a really good uh, approach to take here. So if you click on getting started and what do you need? So the basics that you actually need to get this up and running is a Raspberry Pi. Um, you're going to need a keyboard, a mouse, a screen, um, a power supply. I don't know where you're going to be running this, whether you're going to be powering it from the mains or from your boat battery. So there's a couple of different options there. But to get up and running, you're going to need a power supply. You're going to need an SD card. And then you're probably going to need to get yourself a USB GPS receiver. You can obviously connect this into the boat network um, and receive information that way. But to, if you want a standalone unit, just simple, just up and running quickly to get yourself some sort of chart plotter, that is what you're going to need. When you've got those components, the next thing you're going to want to do is head over to the downloading section. So head over to here, click on Open Plotter Getting Started. There are other versions. You can run it headless, and headless means that it's not got a monitor connected, so it's going to boot up with a network address. But for absolute basics and to get yourself up and running, click on the Getting Started. And here now you've got the two options of the 32-bit and the 64-bit operating system. I would go for the 64-bit operating system. If you've got yourself a Raspberry Pi 4 and it's got um, 2 to 4 gigs of RAM, preferably 4 gig is the sweet spot, um, go for the 64-bit OS. It is just, just better. It's faster and it's better. So if you click on that, get that downloaded. So to put the image that you've just downloaded from the Open Plotter website onto the SD card for the Raspberry Pi, um, head over to the raspberrypi.com website and download the imager. So this, this is a really useful tool. It's dead easy to use and it'll put the image onto that SD card dead quick. Once you've downloaded that, pick obviously pick your appropriate operating system. For me, it's, it's Mac. Um, once you've got a copy of that, you're going to see the screen pop up like this. Choose the OS and you're going to need to go down here to use a custom one. Click on custom and select the file that you want to, to burn. And for me, it's the open plot of version three, starting stable 64 bit image, real catchy name, uh, and then choose the SD card. So plug in your SD card at this point, click that and click right. It'll then go through and it'll burn that to the SD card. So once you've done that, you're going to take the SD card out of this. It'll do a verification stage. Take it out, 
plug it into the Raspberry Pi and then start the boot process on the Raspberry Pi. So once your Pi has booted up, you should be presented with the screen that you can see in front of us here. I would connect yourself to Wi-Fi. So just go up to the top corner here and connect to your local uh, Wi-Fi network. And then there's a couple of things you're going to want to set up and turn on straight away. So if you go into the preferences menu and you go to the Raspberry Pi config, there's a couple of um, buses on the Raspberry Pi that you can turn on. And there's also a sort of remote access as well that you're probably going to want to turn on as well. So these are sort of, I suppose, the, the very first few things to get up and running. OK, so once you get to this uh, page here, head over to interfaces and you're going to want to turn on VNC. So if you want to remote access like I'm doing here, if you want to um, type in an IP address and connect to the Raspberry Pi at some point, I would turn that service on. I would also turn on uh, I2C. Uh, that's always very useful and one wire. So um, if you followed any of the videos on the channel, um, I2C is a, a bus type interface. And what you can do there is you can use things like humidity, pressure, and temperature sensors connected to the uh, GPIO pins on the board, and you can get that information into your setup. So you might want to do that at some point, so it's, there's no harm in turning that on. Um, so get that turned on. And the same with one wire. That's a different type of interface, but also the, the sensors are very cheap, um, and uh, some of them are waterproof as well. So for me, I would turn on VNC, SPI you can turn on, I2C, and one wire. Click OK. You'll probably have to reboot, but that then gets you up and running and in a good position to move on. So again, head over to the menu at the top, open plotter and settings. You may not see all of these options here. These are things that you can install and I'll show you how to do that now. But the next one would be into the settings menu. Once that's loaded, you need to hit refresh. Again, make sure the Pi is connected to the internet for this. And this is going to give you a list of those applications that you can download and that you've just seen in the menu up here and um, anything that requires an update. OK, so you can see here all the applications that are installed in this menu and these are anything that, that's um, where there's a, an update um, or you haven't actually got that version installed so you can see here this is not installed and that's for wind information overlaid onto a map so that's a useful one to get these grips so you could download and install that but you can see here the documentation requires an update so you would click on that and you would click install and that would then install the update to go off and download it and then it would bring you back to this screen where you're going to have to press refresh so we'll do that in a second so if I just show you some of the things that I think are really handy to have. So signal case should already be installed. Open CPM, which is the chart plotter aspect of, of this package, really helpful. Dashboards you're going to want. Serial you're going to want. CAN bus you're probably going to want if you've got a later network. So if your boat's configured with N2K, so the NMEA 2000 type network, you're going to want that. Um, network is wireless networking or wired networking on the Raspberry Pi. That will probably be in, installed by default, but again, always handy to update as required. Pi Pilot is a way to get an autopilot through software within this application. So again, depending on what you want to do with that, that could be a good one to take. I2C sensors, as I say, that's measuring sort of temperature, humidity. There's loads of different ones, but they're the ones that the most common ones that you see installed. So again, very helpful. GPIO, you're going to need that. IoT, I've not done anything with IoT just yet, but that's one that you could possibly take as well. And then towards the bottom of the menu, we've got notifications. Notifications are a way to trigger something based on an event. So I've started to do a little bit with that in the bilge monitoring aspect of my current project. I can now send him a notification through and it'll trigger an alarm or it'll trigger a pop up or something like that. So that's useful. AV nav is a open CPN type equivalent. Um, I've not done a lot with that, but again, up to you. And SDR VHF, so that's where you can get AIS information in. So depending on what you want there, you, you sort of click those and you install them. So we'll go back up in the menu and we'll just update this one so you can see the process. So I'm going to click install on that because there's an update. And yes, we do. We always want to install all the dependencies because that could update another app. And it'll go off now, it'll get the packages, and it'll complete the install for us. Okay, and now we will need to click refresh. And as you can see, that pending task has disappeared and the install version matches the candidate version. So we've got the latest version now of all the software. So settings is a really good place to, to always go to, to, to check for updates um, and to install any additional packages that you want. 
So the next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to head over to Open Plotter and you're going to head over to Serial. So in here, this is where you're going to add your GPS receiver. And you can see that my GPS receiver is saying that it's missing. It, it isn't actually plugged in at the moment. I'm recording this on a different device. So what you would do here is you would plug in your device, as you can see there. You would give it an alias. Give everything an alias. It's really handy later on when you get a bit more advanced and you start collecting a lot more things to this package. You can actually see what's what. So always give things um, a short alias so that you know what it is. And you need to tell it the data type of the application that you're connecting. So you've got a couple of options there, um, NME0183, NMEA2000 and Signal K. Signal K is useful for something that's got a plug-in. So where you're connecting things like a maybe a Victron battery monitor, it doesn't actually know the format that it's coming out. It's going to use a plug-in within Signal K to actually decode that information. Things like a GPS, it sends the data by default in that format. So as I say, depending on what you're connecting at this stage, you need to give your device an alias and you need to tell it the data type. Once you've done that, you're going to see that pop up in the application in a second. So you do that, you click on apply and this will turn green depending on what you're connecting. The I believe the Signal K ones are yellow um, and the NME ones, NMEA ones are green. So once we've done that, we need to head over to the Signal K. So that's this application here. This is the quickest way to get to it. OK, and now you're presented with this screen. This is the default screen that you'll see. Just ignore a bit of this information at the bottom. Yours is not going to say this. There's a lot of things I've got connected that just aren't plugged in at the moment. So that it's going to look a little bit different. But essentially what you've got is you've got this main dashboard. On this top side here, you can see the number of um, bits of information and Signal K paths. So everything that you connect to Signal K has a Signal K path. Some are generated for you and some you generate as you're going through and you're selecting things, particularly with things like temperature sensors. You can tell the temperature sensor whether it's inside inside or outside. So there are things like that. And you'll see from some of the other videos on the channels where I've done that. Um, at the bottom here, you can tell uh, device uptime and you can also see what's connected to it. So any anything that's connected to it via an IP would, would show up in the web socket clients part there. At this side, this is where you can see the information and how that information is coming into Signal K. So you'll always get one or two random ones. You'll always see a default and you may also see some other things. So if you had an I2C sensor, so temperature and humidity, things like that, you would see that pop up there. If you were using the um, SDR AIS, you would see that here. I have a sea talk network on my boat, so I see quite a lot of information. This is probably the highest one for me. Um, that's bringing in wind, data, depth, all that sort of lovely good stuff uh, in via the sea talk interface. Um, you would see GPS here. So this is where you're going to see GPS pop up on this side. And you can see that the GPS ID here um, at the bottom. So this would say started in green for you and away it would go. So now you've got to this point, actually, you can go over and you can actually load the chart plotter. And by now you'd actually see your position located on the chart plotter because that's actually all you need to do to get up and running. So if we head over to um, open CPM. And here now you'll get um, uh, your position information at the top. This should go green and you should see your location plotted on the map. Now, there are lots of other things that you can do. You can obviously go into this application and you can configure and download charts depending on your region. In the UK, we mostly have to pay for our charts. Um, so I've done some videos on how that you how you can include those in the application. And you can go away and do other things. You can set up dashboards and things so that you can get the relevant data that you want to see within the application. So what I'm going to do there is I'm going to pause at that point I think um, and if anybody's got any comments or questions that they want answering put them in the video there's lots of other videos on the channels that cover setting this other stuff up and I don't believe the UI has changed so much that that those videos are no longer helpful if that isn't the case please do comment um, and I will update those videos I think I've used this quite a lot now so I'm, I'm at that point where it doesn't seem that different to me but that might not be the case for everybody else so as I say drop a comment in the in the uh, the comment section on the video um, and I will redo those videos if required So in this part of the video, we'll look at how you can migrate from version 2 to version 3. So if you've been following the channel for a bit, you'll know I've done quite a bit of work in KIP um, and I've got Grafana running and I've got quite a bit of data sort of going to and from in different sensors and things. So I was a little bit concerned about this, but actually it's quite a relatively easy process to follow. 
So to restore the main features, the plugins and the things that you configured in things like KIP, you're going to need to head over to the Signal K um, server section. So you get this extra menu on the left by logging in. So make sure you're logged in, then click server and then go to backup and restore. And as you can see at the top here, you're going to need to click backup. And if you select the plugin options, it's going to restore the plugins without you needing to be online. So depending whether you're online or not, that that's uh, an option that you can consider. I chose to take a full backup because when you do the um, restore point, you can actually select what parts of that you're going to restore. So take everything for now um, and save that to a USB stick. Um, and then you can choose what parts of this that you're going to re-import when your new system is up and running. So if you've got dashboard set up in a Grafana, what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to share the dashboard to export it. And as you can see here, you click on share, then export and then save to file. You must repeat this process for each dashboard that you've created. I've decided not to back up the database, so I do log some of my information uh, historically so that I can go back. But there have been quite a few changes in terms of the database application and how the data is stored, I believe. So there's, there seems to be a bit more work involved in doing that. And to be quite honest, I don't think that data is actually needed anymore. So I've not gone through the process of exporting the database. I've left that where it is. Um, and now the where you're sort of seeing this picking up is when um, we've gone through the installation process with OpenPlotter 3. So I've wiped the hard drive. I've installed OpenPlotter 3 on a 64-bit image. And I'm now at the point where everything is booted back up um, and I've got my files ready to it to import. So here you can see the Signal K backup that I took. And these three files are the files that came out of Grafana. If we log back in and we go to the backup and restore and we choose a uh, Restore from file and um, we're going to need to pick the file that we want to restore and that's the file there and I'm going to click open and I'm going to just show you the process um, of restoring that into Signal K and getting everything back up and running. You can see here that it's gone through that restore file and it's got the various parts of that restore file back. There are uh, the plugin config is there, the settings, the security, so your um, account and anything that you've uh, gone into and approved in terms of you know when you get the notifications it says you need to approve the security token all of that stuff now is actually stored within this file so depending on what bit you want to take back um, and restore into this version um, you can select the options for here for me I'm just going to do a full restore and, and get everything back to, to where it is there are a few things obviously that you're going to have to go in and just tweak some of the plugins have had to go in and just retweak it and update also because they look like they've gone through and had a look at at which ones uh, maybe haven't been updated for quite a while. And as I say, there are a few little changes within the software. So I'm, I'm not going to be able to cover everybody's setup with this, but basically just restore to that point and then go through each of the applications that you use and the settings in terms of the open plotter parts. So when you go to things like um, the GPIO app or the I2C app and make sure everything is there and, and set up correctly. So here we go. We click on confirm and it's going to start the process of actually uh, downloading and installing those plugins for us. So now that that's complete, you can see here that um, when we load KIP, most of the dashboards are back to where they used to be. There's a few bits missing. The Grafana plugin is obviously missing from there because that's not running at the moment. But some of the gauges are missing some of the, uh, the the paths. So what I had to do then was I had to go through and just retweak the paths and, and uh, make sure that everything was set up as it was previously. Some of the sensors hadn't picked themselves up. But the vast majority of the stuff was there, so it wasn't like I was starting from scratch. There are a few small UI changes. As you can see here on the I2C sensor, there's no connections tab anymore. You used to have to, the Signal K part of that was actually on a separate tab where it's now actually integrated with the main sensor. So there's a few little things like that have changed, but if you're familiar with um, OpenPlotter 2, you'll you'll pick this up really quickly. There's there's nothing that um, is overly complicated here. If anything, it's it's simpler than it was previously. So first impressions are it's running really fast, really stable, and it's easier to use than it's ever been before. A couple of things that I'd just like to point out that I've now changed from my previous version, and one of those being the APN client. So I'm now running this in a way where I can connect to it, and it's already connected to the Marina Wi-Fi. I couldn't do that previously, and I'm not sure I tr ever tried it on the Pi 4 um, with OpenPlotter 2, but in earlier versions that seemed really unstable, and it doesn't anymore. So that's uh, something I've noticed. 
this tab on the networking app shows the data type and the port that that data is being sort of sent out of SignalK on. That's been there for a while, but I just thought that was something there useful to really highlight. And finally, over to OpenCPN. So in OpenCPN, I find if you set the data connection to NMEA, that application seems a lot more stable than using the SignalK. Now, I think that is something to do with the fact that I've got two GPSs and I'm going to do a separate video on data filtering, well, actually data prioritization now in OpenPlotter 3 because that also works really well. So I'll, I'll put that in a different video because it's... Um, it's probably not relevant for this one quite so much, but I do find that in OpenCPN, if I change that type to NMEA, I do not get any instability in that application at all. So I'm going to finish the video there. I hope that's been useful. And if there's any comments or any suggestions for any other content that people would like to see, please drop a comment in the section below.